Now that we've looked at the total amount of energy that a signal has, uh, so for an energy signal, we've already defined this uh, total amount of energy that a signal has. We've defined it by performing this integral from minus infinity to infinity. We've generalized it for a signal that is complex by saying that if we have a complex signal, we can multiply the signal by its complex conjugate. And we've also used Parseval's theorem to say that we can look at the total amount of energy in the time domain, or we can look at it in the frequency domain. Let's take this a step further and see uh, how much energy is actually contained in some band F. So this is going to be defined as the energy spectral density. So as we know, time domain signals have frequency spectral components, and the energy at a single frequency spectra, so at any some, some frequency that you define, uh, is going to be proportional to the square of its magnitude at that frequency. So let's see, uh, let's, let's do a little bit of a proof to see how we can show what this is, that uh, the, the energy at a single frequency spectra is proportional to this amount, and then we're going to use that to define an energy spectral density. So we're going to use the energy at a single frequency, which we're going to say is a band or a bandwidth. So the energy in a band is proportional to the square of this uh, the, the signal in the frequency domain. So this is an energy per band, and that is a uh, density, a type of density. So let's come up with a uh, example LTI system and see how this applies and come up with a little bit of a, uh, a derivation to see how much energy is going to be contained in a single band. So let's start by imagining our classic LTI system or, or any system really, but we're going to say this is an LTI system. And in this system, right, we know we have inputs, we have outputs, and then we have a system that's represented by this transfer function. And we can look at it in time or we can look at it in frequency. And based on our Parseval's theorem, we know that we can find the total amount of energy in that system uh, using the time domain or the frequency domain. So if we know the total amount of energy, can we take this a step further and determine what is the energy uh, density or what is the energy uh, of the output signal? So what is the energy of the output signal? Well, we could look at this in the time domain or in the frequency domain just like we had been doing with our, our general signal. So instead of looking at a general signal, we can look at the output signal from a system. And for an LTI system, if you're looking in the frequency domain, we can say that, okay, not only uh, do we know what it is, we know what y of f is equal to. We know that y of f is equal to the input multiplied by the transfer function. So we can substitute this in here and we can put it into here. So we can now say that the energy of the output signal, and this, this should just say energy, the energy of the output signal is the square of the input multiplied by the transfer function. So let's continue this by thinking about, we're, again, we're trying to determine the, the final uh, density of the output signal. So let's imagine that this LTI system looks like this. We have a transfer function and the transfer function has a magnitude or a height of one, and it passes a very narrow band of frequencies. Uh, then we'll call that delta f. Now let's imagine that our uh, transfer function is a bandpass filter, and the bandpass that it allows is uh, a, a frequency f naught, and the the width of that band becomes very small. It, it approaches zero, such that eventually only that single frequency would pass, and it would pass with an amplitude response of unity. Now, now that we've defined a type of transfer function that doesn't have any amplitude response, uh, any amplitude changing response, just has that unity response, let's consider a general input signal in the frequency domain. And so our general input signal, it looks like something like this. We don't know exactly what it looks like. But we do know that at the frequencies of interest, f naught, we know that when it passes through, we're going to get x of f naught. And so x of f naught is going to pass through a system. And the system has a response of 1 
and it only allows these frequencies through. So instead of looking at this, uh, it doesn't allow any of these extra frequencies, right? Our XF could be defined at those frequencies, but it doesn't allow them through. It's only allowing this point through. So it's only allowing frequency F naught through. And if that happens, if we pass our function XF, if we pass that through this system that only allows a very small bandwidth through F naught, we're at the output of our transfer function. We're just going to have the basically a response where at frequency F naught, our original signal XF is let through and it's only let through at these two frequencies. So the output is going to be unchanged. It's going to be one multiplied by XF naught. And that's what we get here. So the output height is x of f naught, and it is only being let through at this frequency f naught. And we can imagine that this band is very small so that it's it, the band pass filter is just this one frequency being let through. So now we're starting to get closer to seeing how the energy of an output signal looks. So we have this output yf, and we're starting to see how that energy looks at the output. And from our first definition of the energy, we knew that we needed to integrate from minus infinity to infinity uh, all the way across this output. But we can see there's only really two spots, right, that the, the frequency has, has let through any the function with any amplitude. <clears throat> and because of our the way we defined our transfer function, where it just had this height of 1, right, what we can see is that uh, what is actually going to come through at the output is just going to be the x of f, because this transfer function hf is has a magnitude response of 1, and it's only letting through one band. So if it only lets through one band, and we're integrating from minus infinity to infinity, there's just this small uh, sliver of spectrum, right? Just this really small sliver of spectrum that's so small that it's, it's just going to be f naught being let through. And that means that because so much of this is equal to 0, when we integrate from minus infinity to infinity, we can reduce this to saying that, OK, the energy at our output, when it's passed through this system with this narrow band pass, is equal to 2 x f naught squared multiplied by this small delta f. So the 2 comes from we have the negative component and the positive component of this frequency, f naught. So we have two of those. And the width of it is this delta f. And so that's where this, this total energy at the output comes from.